I am going to be talking about something which is you might have heard of it. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if you I'm not sure if you would have yet. Uh, it's probably the biggest thing to happen in artificial intelligence since OpenAI launched uh, ChatGPT three. Probably haven't heard about it. Okay, so it's called it's this thing called AutoGPT, right? Never heard of it. Um, you haven't? Okay, this is this is going to be very interesting. So it's all the rage at the moment. It's um, it's come out uh, about two weeks ago, um, which by the time you're listening to this, about a month ago, I would say. Yeah. So it's um, it's AutoGPT, and uh, it's really hard to understand the scale at which this is moving ahead, um, because of how rapid and mind blowing the very next thing and the next thing and the next thing is in artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, it feels like there's something mind blowing every week, but this is genuinely very incredible. Um, so the best way that I've heard it described is it's basically there's a series of projects which are all sort of auto GPTs, um, but there's primarily it's primarily coming from one project called um, Auto GPT, and so uh, basically it's not a company, it's um, it's a GitHub project, and uh, it's open for download um, by anyone. So if you're a developer. You can download the repository, set it up, and then use it to automate tasks. So this, um, there's also one called Baby AGI, which stands for Artificial General Intelligence. So basically, it's something that can be used as what that means is it's something that can be used as an alternative to a human capability, uh, and then you'll have your own general intelligence to perform tasks autonomously. So what you do is you give it a mission, and you give it five core goals. And AutoGPT will API into ChatGPT4 and it'll carry out tasks and create its own prompts in order to carry out those tasks. And so it'll build its own system f- to get the job done. So one of the first um, uses that I saw of this was a developer asking AutoGPT to create a website in React. Uh, and then before what you would have done is you would have asked ChatGPT to write you the code to create the website. You would have described it carefully, telling it about buttons, colors, layouts, um, and asked it to tweak, tweak the code when um, parts of it like didn't work. Uh, and if you're not a very experienced developer, you might have set up the, um, the IDE or the interface wrong uh, where you input the code and you might have the wrong class or something in the code or there's something in settings which hasn't worked. And um, you would have had to try to figure out the, the, uh, the problems and the issues and you would have probably bro- broken the project because you didn't know what you were doing. Um, with AutoGPT, this is solved. Even for um, experienced developers, this will save a whole lot of time. So the problem is solved because uh, it'll build it in real time in front of you based on those prompts. So it's really cool because you tell it you want to build that website and then it will build it while you're watching it, uh, watching it happen as opposed to tell me how to build this, I'll copy this in, I'll change this, I want this tweaked. Instead of saying all of those things, you just say, I want the website to be blue and have these buttons and do this, and it'll it'll come up with tasks. And so it basically provides these three main contextual points um, that it works off. So what it does is it does reasoning, plan, and criticism. So GPT is um, basically showing what it's doing as you're looking at it, uh, auto-GPT is, um, and it'll show the reasoning behind it, the plan for the next step, and then what it's going to do next uh, and where it's worked. Then using criticism, it's able to generate new reasoning, uh, make a new plan, and input new prompts based off this, um, which will then criticize again and generate the next prompt. So the whole feedback loop is it's very quick, um, and it provides uh, without like it, it works by itself without much human intervention, which is really cool. Um, so basically, uh, there's this whole area called prompt engineering, which has sort of come up, um, which is really interesting. It's also so, a bit related to what I was going to say. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm aware of so, this. Yeah, so prompt engineering um, is basically instead of taking four people or ten people to do Microsoft Excel, um, what we'd be doing is, and this seems to be a new job that was coming up very rapidly, um, you could take one person and they could tell you do this data entry and um, an AI system would automatically do all of that data entry. So now instead of that, those four people, you have this one person that is prompt engineering in order to get there. But what if AutoGPT is able to generate its own prompts? So it's almost like we've cut out that job that we almost needed. Yeah. So, um, so it's really interesting because yeah. now you could have one person doing AutoGPT and that could cut out four prompt engineers who could cut out four um, people inputting data manually. Yeah. So it's, um, it's almost like we're 
in the second and third order before we've even got to the first order. Which, you yeah, know? which is crazy because people are still just getting their head around chat GPT. And at this, you're right. At this point, it feels as though you really still have to think about the substance of what you want it to do and then it'll bring complexion to it. It'll add stuff around it. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong, but it still requires a fair bit of critical thinking by the person using it. You're right. And so at this point it was like, okay, we need people who can, we need some smart person who can think about the content of what needs to be in this, you know, piece of material, some writing or let's write a website or whatever it is. And then you're right. Now you're like, oh, actually we just need one person who just broadly knows what they want to do, put it into auto GPT. It creates the subset of tasks that are required to, to make it happen. You're right. And then, so then you, you don't need anyone who's a specialist anymore because it, it, previously you did. Like I still wouldn't have known how to really make a website um, using um, chat GPT, but maybe I can't using auto GPT. Exactly. Well, what do you think is the, and I might not have emphasized it enough. What do you think is the main issue with the current system that I've just shown there? So what using what would you auto, auto GPT, chat GPT. Yeah. Yeah. That, that oh, auto, so auto GPT. Well, I, I suppose it can make decisions that are in, what you would define as incorrect. So it would use rationale that you think is not right. And so it would come up with decisions that you don't think are right. That could be, that could be an issue. And um, it's not one that I had in mind, but What's your one that you um, have in mind? the main issue, and I might not have emphasized it enough at the moment, it's a good hub project. Yeah. Um, and so you have to copy all of the repositories and you have to have your own, um, you have to have Python and you have to have um, a system installed. Yeah, the average man, the average person cannot access it. Is that what you're saying? That's right. That's okay. right. Yeah. So it's not very accessible. That's um, that's the issue. And so no user interface, no user experience, um, not very accessible. Um, What's going on? Why has no one done that? This is a problem that's been solved, but uh, it's already been solved. So it's been two weeks since they launched this uh, and it's already there's already something out called um, Agent GPT, which is uses auto GPT, which uses... OpenAI's um, chat GPT, very interesting. And so basically this is a user interface that someone's built on top of it. Wow. Um, so I was having a play around with this. Cool. Um, the problem, it was limited because um, I would have to sign up for, and I still will sign up for GPT-4, then use the API and put that into agent GPT. Then it'll work seamlessly. So it still can't work with chat GPT-3? Well, I think... ChatGPT 3 doesn't have, and I might be wrong, but it doesn't have API um, attached to it. It essentially can't connect to it. That's right. But GPT 4, they launched, um, they launched APIs in February or March or something. Um, and so that was the big thing when they launched the API. Um, I think it only came out in March. So I think that they launched that in March. Um, so yeah, some of the um, some of the best applications though that I've seen for Auto GPT so far. Um, well, or some of the best applications that you could apply. So have you heard of, and we're getting nitty gritty with the GPT um, acronyms. I think people need to start naming things differently. But have you heard of Hustle GPT? <laughs> no. Okay, so this is a guy. It's not, actually, it's not actually a service or anything. This is just a guy that was a hustler on chat GPT. So he's this guy named Jackson Greathouse, and he's on Twitter. And um, this was on the 16th of March. And he said he'd given, um, and he had, he had a really viral tweet. So... He said he's given um, GPT-4 a budget of $100 and told it to make as much money as possible. Then he'll act as the human liaison. Um, he'll do anything that GPT-4 tells him to do, no manual labor and nothing illegal. Wait, is this using AutoGPT? This is using ChatGPT. So this is a Just month ago. Just using ChatGPT-4. This is before AutoGPT had come out. Jeez. Um, he said he'll do no manual labor and nothing illegal, but he'll be the human part and he'll do the parts that um, GPT-4 can't do. And so... Basically, what happened was um, GPT-4 came up with a plan and the plan was to buy a domain for $10, start hosting for $5, so 15 spent so far. Um, the next part of the plan was to use the remaining $85 to set up an affiliate website and um, design and create content for the site. Um, so he chose the niche of an eco-friendly product. He signed up for affiliate programs with higher commission rates. Um, so like Amazon Associates, um, and then there were two other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he leveraged um, social media and SEO to drive traffic. Mm -hmm. And so GPT-4 came up with um, the... Could I just make one point there? Yeah. That phrase in and of itself is very difficult. Yeah, exactly. Like I agree. He and just so leveraged... What did you say? He leveraged um, SEO and yes. um, social media. But that's the thing. It's That's the high-level view. Yeah. Um, but then... It said this is the high level plan of what what he's going to do, and so then it dives deeper 
um, as he goes on. And so it's being the, um, <laughs> the, the AI component and he's being the human liaison of, of yeah. doing those parts. Yeah. Um, so then GPT-4 came up with a domain name. Um, oh, it cool. helped with prompts to generate uh, images and logos for the site using Dali and um, yeah. Midjourney. Yeah. Uh, and then they ended up with this site called Green Gadget Guru. And so GPT-4 chose this split of advertising spend and drove traffic to the site. He's basically taken on invested capital. Um, and so he's, he's valued the company at $25,000 given that he took on $500 for 2% of the company. After day one, he had $1,300 in cash, partially from Discord. Um, and then after eight days, he'd generated uh, interest into investing. And so then he'd like built up this, um, this cash into this um, business. And then he made $130 in revenue after eight days of running this um, site. And so basically, if you think about that, he's, he's generated 130% ROI on his, um, on his spend, basically. Um, and if that was at a different scale, that would, be, that would be pretty cool. He only did one, he did like one article. Yeah, I was going to say there's one generated, article. Yeah, there's only one article. <laughs> yeah. And he's generated that from that one article. And I think it's more about showing that it's a viable um, option, yeah. As opposed to actually doing it, I think he. Yeah, this is definitely just a proof of concept because, like, that button, the read latest articles button doesn't work. Categories doesn't work. About doesn't work. Nothing works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he's ended up with this article that made 130 bucks. And so since he's um, done that, he's leveraged a Discord community with uh, 3,000 members. And so obviously, community building like that can be very valuable as well. Um, got a, a viral tweet out of it. And um, here's what's cool about auto GPT and where that would come in. So instead of saying that whole, I'll be a human liaison part, um, you would just be able to, uh, in this case, give it the money um, to enact your what you want it to do. What do you mean give um, it money? And it would automatically be able to process like the setting Like give it up. access to your bank account details or something. It's something which um, can connect with whatever you're doing. So if you made a PayPal, for example, in order to um, access and said like access this PayPal and um, set up the business like this, you know, I think you would do it in a way that's more separated from your actual stuff. Okay, but you okay. could say yes. you're authorized to make account, an account. It has $100 in it. Here's the access details. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. For example, it goes and makes a, a GoDaddy account, registers a domain for you, um, goes and makes a Facebook ads account, starts running ads for you um, then and like starts writing HTML for your website and puts it on you know online and everything and starts hosting it it could like theoretically be doing all of that um, for you without having to need that sort of human liaison part so you could almost make it side hustle for you and you're sort of sitting back and occasionally prompting the next task but even at that stage, it's it's coming up with this list of tasks. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. That is cool. That's um, very cool. I don't get yeah. it practically fully yet. Like I need to see like a demo video. Like I don't understand like how does it go on to GoDaddy and create an account? Like how does GoDaddy let what it should know is a bot use use the account? Like it has like how's it going to get through captures, for example? Like um, don't they stop bots from doing stuff? Like I think like I – I'm not criticizing what you're saying. I think I, I think there's some things that I don't fully understand in practicality, and maybe that's because they haven't been sorted out yet. But mm. theoretically, it's really cool. If you think about um, GPT, you can show it a picture of there's this really cool picture of all these strings on balloons getting cut, and they um, and they're flying. The balloons are all flying away, and you can ask it why the picture is why that's bad, and then um, GPT four will actually explain. It'll interpret the picture and explain why it's bad that the balloons are flying away. Um, and how, um, obviously like someone's cut the rope and the balloons have flat flown away. And so the fact that it's able to interpret that, I feel like it's able to interpret which, which of the squares. No, I agree. It knows what has a, what has a bridge in it or what has a bus in it. But like yeah. my understanding, and again, Reg, I'm talking from someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, but surely we all don't know what we're talking about at this point. Um, like Capture, my understanding, the way the capture functions is that it tracks the movement and the way that the person or the bot is interacting with the website, not necessarily what it clicks on. 
that's a, like a secondary measure. The primary measure is like how it uses the website. And and again, you this is a this is moving into a field where I don't understand, but like we're either saying capture is totally redundant here. Um, or we're saying that it really can't do a lot of these things because Capture is going to block it. But it's interesting to see. I don't know. And well, how many? Yeah, how many services have Capture though? Like a lot. I don't know. I feel like I've used a lot of things that don't have it. Um, yeah, the, like so the newer been... stuff. Like I feel like a lot of the newer Web three AI like platforms don't. But anything incumbent that's big that has like a board of directors, which is like a lot of the bigger platforms that you might need to use, I feel like they have captures. But like, I don't know, like, we'll see. I, I just would love to see it in, in, like in reality. I feel like it's, we talk about so much of this stuff conceptually that, oh, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this. But like, show me a video of someone actually, someone's <laughs> auto, auto GPT creating them a GoDaddy account. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm, mm. I'm a pessimist. Clearly I'm a pessimist, sorry. I mean, I disagree with you on the on the capture thing. You think it just can defeat it? Well, I just haven't done one in a long time. Oh, okay. Um, but um, that's that's the main. Well, I literally uh, I signed up for something today and it had a capture on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's very very fresh in the mind. Yeah. Um, I agree with the concept that it's hard to see how it would work. You know. Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, I asked it to um to research for the podcast. Yeah. Um, and basically, it set up three tasks for itself. Uh, which included searching the internet for different um, auto GPT models, uh, which are available, summarizing the key features, um, providing recommendations. You did that using Agent GPT. Yeah, I used that using Agent GPT because I haven't set up the um, I haven't set up Auto GPT myself. But wait, how did it work if it you are, you don't have Chat GPT four? So it works up to a certain point, oh. and then it says this is a demo, um, oh. and we've at, we've used our our demo purpose um, for the API. Okay. Um, but what it did, it, it created those three tasks. Um, so it'll it'll create tasks um, as a to-do list in order to achieve your main goal. Um, and so, yeah, it, it basically um, did all those three things. It searched, um, it wanted to summarize the key features of the research and it wanted to provide recommendations. But as it wrote the first prompt um, and completed the first task, it came up with a fourth task and then a fifth task. Um, and then as it wrote the second one, it created a sixth task and then, um, it continually, um, updated. And then what you can do is you can, after it's created those tasks, um, and done all of that, uh, you can ask it to be more concise or to rewrite something or to make it better. And, um, and it'll take what's done in the past and then, um, continue to kind of improve it, uh, which is cool. Um, and so I thought that was a really good example of kind of iterative prompts because that made use of six or seven prompts, whereas when you're doing a single prompt into GPT, it might not be as good as auto GPT writing six prompts to, to get a better answer. Yeah, which is um, very necessary with chat GPT. Mm, because all you think about when you're doing chat GPT is how do I write a better prompt? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you don't think about how do I write iteratively six prompts to continually make the answer better. Um, so I think that's really cool. It's almost like a little closed loop system, which is helping to improve your answers based on the previous answer, which is cool. Um, so what about the future of these AI ideas, right? So um, so how will it shape people's experiences, especially in uh, as customers of products? Um, well, we've actually gone from how to do this to do this for me. So We've gone from this model where we're mm. typing in Google how to do this. Then we've gone to how do I do this in chat GPT. Now we've gone to do this task um, on my behalf, which is really cool. Um, so my first example that I'm going to bring up um, in terms of the future of AI ideas, and this is a really cool one. I heard this on the podcast Marketing Against the Grain, um, which is um, a pretty cool podcast. So basically, previously, well, I'll, I'll go through the idea that they did um, later. But previously, we had a huge cost to develop a website, right? So let's say you go to Fiverr or you go to a, a web dev shop, right? And you might pay someone $1,000 or $3,000 to build your website from scratch. Um, or you might pay $200 or $500 to make a WordPress or a Wix or a, a Squarespace. Someone designs it all, lays it out, creates inquiry forms, um, does all your email and stuff like that. Um, and Or you spend a lot of time doing it yourself. Um, you might spend, you know, 20 hours building your website to make it really good. Um, 
And uh, at this point now, the marginal cost of building a website is so low that it only takes um, setting up the goal of build this um, and add it to my website in order to build a new page or build a new whole website, right? Um, so what's the benefit there? So you could build, here's, here's a really good idea. You could build a custom landing page for every customer that comes to your site um, that looks exactly how that customer wants it to look um, based on what their preferences are or what, what your tracking is said about them. Um, and then you could make the front page, you could make it prompt based. Um, so it would almost be like a concierge service asking which service they require, um, helping you out in that concierge style. Um, and you could create a thousand different versions of your website, which gives each different user experience based um, on the specific user. So um, that would that would be a really cool idea. But here's something that's taking that a step further and making it iterative. So, um, and this is something that uh, I think people are only sort of just starting to think about in the AI area. Um, so what if you could make, you could iterate the back end of the website as the user is navigating through the site. So instead of having stored data on this massive server and everything like that, um, as, the, as the technology actually naturally speeds up over time and gets much better, um, imagine having an AI-based website where um, you wanted the service to be entirely personal to that customer and every time they click on a new page, AI builds the next page um, as a suggestion based on which pathway the user wants to explore. Yeah. And as they continue to explore throughout, um, say, a search engine, for example, it would continue to refine results based on this whole matrix of decisions that they're making and it could fully create a new web page. Or even the way they're interacting with it, how long they spend on particular sections, how much of certain videos they watch, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So... Imagine a search engine, for example, which you start out looking for plumbers and then you click through and you're on this video streaming service uh, and then you're on, you know, the next thing. And then um, just because you've decided to take all these different pathways through um, this search engine, uh, which is generating the next page for you, which would be really cool. Imagine if, um, that's, imagine if that's what the internet became. Like yeah, exactly. The internet. Like everybody had their wet, like, yeah, that's in, like if someone, yeah, you're right. Like imagine if someone created um, a search engine, which instead of just showing you, as you're saying, instead of showing you um, people's content and instead of everybody creating this uh, method of going through their website and you're still going to the uh, a standard, um, uh, like a standard search engine and then you're going into that uh, space, literally like going through the internet was just, little pockets of different people's website information and it was based on what you're interested in what you liked oh it's very interesting mm, yeah it's great and so here's something that's going to blow your mind even further um so i'll um in terms of generating um content this could be the um the next thing so there's uh there's something around the future of ai which i think could be something which happens and i think it would be really cool so there's this youtube channel i've been following for for years it's called corridor digital and they made this um, they made this video called Anime Rock Paper Scissors, right? And so it was about two months ago. And what they did was they filmed their them like real selves um, against a green screen. So they're they're basically this studio that's really good at um, visual effects and things like that. And so they're always kind of on the cutting edge of visual effects. And so I always watch um, their methods for creating certain things. Yes. And, and so that's one why thing that's, your videos are on the cutting edge of visual effects. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, I did now. I did just launch a um, which might a be new linked film. in the show notes here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll link that down below. Um, <laughs> but uh, but basically, they used AI to so they filmed themselves and then they used AI to turn themselves into um, anime characters, um, which was really cool. So they had this full um, system that they've um, kind of developed to regenerate themselves as those anime characters, and then they've created a full anime. Um, like episode, they've created a seven minute um, video, um, which is full of all these graphic effects, um, all generated by AI, which is really cool. So typically you would need a whole studio, you would have mm -hmm. people drawing and then you'd have people animating. Crazy. Um, and then you'd have all the voice actors and all that kind of thing. Um, in this case, it was, they were filmed and then it all overlaid and it all looked really good, right? So... Another great AI, um, this is a different idea entirely, and uh, I'll tie them both together. Um, so there's this thing that's been going around. It's an AI headshot generator. So basically, you input a few random pictures of yourself, you pay this fee, 
and the AI will generate a bunch of professional headshots for your LinkedIn profile picture. Um, so you might not have a professional photo. You might um, be going to a job interview or something like that and you want to have some professional headshots. Um, so you can create um, all these different ideas. You can make it generate 150 different AI versions of yourself um, using a few photos of yourself. Um, so let me know if you can see where I'm going with this. But uh, imagine combining those ideas um, with generative content uh, and something like Midjourney and Dali 2 can do. So the common problem you have on Netflix, right, is you don't know what you want to start watching. Um, sometimes you don't know if you should rewatch something or if you should try a new show. Um, so imagine taking your own image and writing a prompt for a show. I could just say something there. I had that experience last night. And yeah, okay. yep. I, I think I accidentally watched the Taylor Swift documentary for a second time. <laughs> for the second time? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Accidentally. I got to the very end and was like, oh, I have heard her talk about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't know you'd seen it? No, nah, the whole time I was just erring on the edge of like, maybe I have, maybe I haven't. I haven't. But yeah, turns <laughs> yeah, out I had. Yeah. Keep going. Classic. Um, yeah, so imagine taking your own image and you write a prompt for a show. Then the whole show is generated as you start watching the first episode. Um, then the second episode is being written, produced, edited, and uh, modified by the AI. And then imagine um, having the computing power on your phone someday, uh, which I'm sure as technology advances um, will happen. Um, you could start watching a show entirely made up. Um, and then the following minutes of the show, just like YouTube buffering, um, for example, are it's being created. created as you're watching it. Um, and then How the does following, it know what you want? Well, imagine it being um, very text-based or recommendation-based. It takes, say, your entire Netflix catalog and looks at what you've watched. Or, oh, okay. Um, or say if you just tell it, if you um, tell it your favorite movies or, um, you know, you say, you just, or you just say you want an Italian gangster movie or something mm. like that, mm. um, in the style of, you know, some director. I think that's um, good. Yeah. Yeah. So if you said, you know, you want, you know, st I mean, I've used the example before, but Star Wars in the, in the style of Wes Anderson, yeah. um, it could, for example, generate that show yeah. as you're watching it. I could imagine, um, I could imagine. So that's right. I could imagine at the start you like turn on the um, voice control and you're like, uh, I want to watch a movie X, Y, Z. Like I want these characteristics of a movie. The movie mm. starts playing. The only way I can see it working, unless it's got like Neuralink, which would be, a, that's <laughs> crazy, um, is you pause it and then you go, this is too slow or this is too graphic or, you know, this isn't funny enough. And then it like adapts it a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's... um. It's certainly interesting, but imagine yeah, it's really interesting. that generative content as you're watching. I mean, that could be really cool. Yeah, but I don't so, get the generative as you watch concept unless it's like, because how does it know how to adapt it? Well, if you if you create a prompt at the front of the show before you're watching the show, if there's a prompt there, it hasn't made that show before based on that prompt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's generating a show entirely new based on that. Um, and then, you know if you want to watch it straight away, then the techno the idea is that the technology is good enough to generate while you're watching. So that's kind of the idea there. Um, so that's kind of why it's generative, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to Midjourney and Dali, how they, they're they generative um, as you prompt them, you know? And so even taking that further, I've, I've kind of, I've kind of taken each concept and pushed it, pushed it out to its maximum sort of theoretical limit, you know? It's very dystopian. Um, I mean, hopefully not dystopian in a depressing way. Well, I think we should talk about that in a minute, but keep going. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Um, so it's going to get worse. Um, so the future of um, the future of startups, that's what I want to talk about next, right? God. So at the moment, someone comes up with an idea, right? Okay. Yeah. And then let's say they have a better way to do insurance brokerage, right? And so they design this sleek service that looks really cool. Um, it shops for the best insurer. Um, now imagine instead of that, you just have a, a nice user interface that you can type anything into and say, switch my insurance to a cheaper one and make sure it includes home property, car insurance, um, and I have these needs and I do this many kilometers and I have a house in this suburb, right? Um, imagine an auto GPT service, which is concierge, 
uh, and exists with a good user interface, um, let's say it already has access to payments and access to your accounts and could do this for you, imagine it automatically switches um, from uh, your old insurer to your new insurer for you by making all the calls and doing all the emailing and doing all the administrative stuff there. Then the whole purpose of the sleeker, easier, better insurance brokerage um, is completely wiped out, right? Totally. You, yeah, you don't need those agents anymore. Exactly. So this is almost working as a personal assistant um, and anything you sort of think of, you just type that in and it starts to happen, you know? Um, so what if the advice that it gives you is wrong? Yeah, I mean, that's it's a, certainly a can of worms. The other thing I think about is what if... If it can, if it can go as far as looking at the criteria and all of the different, um, you know, super, uh, what, we, what are we talking about? Insurance, mm. uh, and choosing those with the characteristics that best fit what you want. Um, what if it could just create its own insurance fund based on going and contacting a bunch of people who are looking to invest in some, you know, I don't know, invest in some like low risk debt, go find a bunch of people, investors. And then also go and find a whole bunch of people who want insurance and just make insurance companies irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. And so the idea is that it could sort of take any of those startup ideas for any incumbent or new um, companies Yeah. and um, and basically make them automated instead. Yeah, it's removing so, the low-hanging fruit stuff for sure. Mm. Well, the only thing I have so many thoughts here. So the, the <laughs> thing that's stopping it from doing the insurance thing is the certification, like or whatever you would call that stuff. As you know, like you you can't operate as an insurance um, fund unless you have certain you meet certain criteria and you have um, certain checks done and certain government bodies or whatever um, approve you. Um, that's probably the same with a um, a broker, right? Broker would have a brokerage license. If you're operating online, effectively doing that without a license. It's probably not legal, right? Well, yeah, but that's um, for ex that's an example of an industry which could be disrupted by this. But if you you could take any other startup idea, yeah, and then disrupt that idea, yeah, um, by creating something generatively. I agree. So, and and to that point, the point that I'm making is the only thing that's like, I guess what I'm trying to say is every every it seems to me that at some point potentially every industry could be disrupted and everything could be AI, which is this weird concept that I don't really understand. We're going to I don't know, but let's leave that because it's a no, big concept. very interesting though. Right? Yeah, yeah for So sure. the only thing that is securing jobs is them being certified by the industry and the process and the system that we currently have. Do you know what I mean? Like, That's right, yeah. An accountant or something. Like let's, you know, if, if uh, a public company has to get their, uh, their records um, like checked every year, and the, the only reason AI can't do that is because it doesn't have the certification uh, to be able to sign off on it. So that for that reason, the accountants get to keep their jobs. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, whereas all these other jobs that don't have this certification, like professional bodies, um, like as you say, like there's not really anything stopping them from being overcome by uh, AI, which I don't know, this whole thing's very strange. Mm. Like. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. What like you're getting rid of it? Like, what have we done here? We've gotten rid of startups, we've gotten rid of the whole entertainment industry, including video and audio. Um, what is this? Like, I get the concept where like people like and people say, you know, oh well, what happens to all the jobs? But like, what does happen to all the jobs? Because <laughs> Well, this is something I've actually this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, and so this almost becomes that situation where you go, Oh, well, is universal basic income um required? And then you think, okay, let's say you pay every everyone gets paid fifty thousand dollars who loses their job, right? But does it get to that point where, okay, all these people are making fifty thousand dollars. So is that fifty thousand dollars worth nothing? Or and like that's the base rate? Mm -hmm. Like is fifty thousand yeah. worth zero once everyone has fifty thousand? I don't know. Like, or is it actually still useful? Now you're asking very hard macroeconomic questions. And so then the question is, does everyone need to own a piece of the AI, um, and then as a shareholder in the AI, you capture the value based on the work that you would have been doing, but instead of that, you're an owner now, um, which in that sense means that you would have to nationalize AI companies. But uh, what are you saying? To... How do we, how, what's the share based on? Everyone gets the same share? Well, yeah, I mean... Is it effectively zero then, relatively? Well, is it or isn't it? So that's the question. I don't know. So Well, it's just this weird thing where it's like, if we all get paid, if we all get the same share in this AI's 
thing that that runs the whole world and we all get then paid the same amount as soon as it's used or whatever but we're all using it um like it it doesn't it just doesn't make any sense in my head it's just it's just really crazy I yeah mean, i think there's i think the end here is that like what we're going for here or like i don't know what we're optimizing for efficiency here and maybe that is not the meaning of life <laughs> do you know what i mean like maybe we're yeah. optimizing for the wrong thing here which is no work and efficiency and do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. This, it's all very strange. Mm, and but they also the, the counter argument there is that everything that's ever come out as a new technology has been mm -hmm. um, people have been scared of I get and it. people haven't wanted to embrace. It. Is this different though? The, the car and the automobile, you know, the of the horse. I wouldn't have made this statement when we were talking about crypto. And I wouldn't have made this statement when we were talking about NFTs. And I wouldn't have made this statement when we were talking about 3D printing. But I will make this statement when we're talking about AI and you're telling me all of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you think about 3D printing, um, the whole concept is that it replaces the industry of construction. And if you think about crypto, the whole concept is that it replaces the, the concept of banking and um, the need for bankers and lawyers and accountants and things like that, right? And so... Kind if you of. disrupt, yeah, well, obviously you're not as afraid. They just create new tools that still require expertise to use. Mm, like well, that depends on if you think that it can get good enough in order to replace those jobs. So if you truly, say, for example, someone who really, really believes in crypto mm -hmm. really also believes that banking can be disrupted, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and that there can be no banks and no one needs to actually use those skills because they can transfer all their money instantly across blockchains, right? And then if you have someone who really believes in 3D printing, then mm. all of the construction workers will get laid off. And then what do they do with their skills, you know? So then it's almost like, do they are they supposed to own a piece of a 3D printing company? Do they get a universal basic income, all that stuff? And so it's all just new technologies, I think. So being more scared or less scared of a technology is a really interesting concept. And I don't know if it's right or wrong, but well, I'm when more scared people... Of it. When people got, um, you know, when when the horse um, got taken away and the automobile was brought in, yep. there were all these, you know, stable, you know, Whatever jobs you call that were yeah, all yeah. gone. When um, sure. when the projectionist was replaced by an automatic projector at the film, you know, cinema, um, people lost their jobs there. And so there's constant moving forward of you know technology. And if you look at now versus a hundred years ago, um, there's a few things that you can say definitively, life's gotten a lot better and technology's gotten a lot better. So it's almost like the new technology that comes out, are you going to stand in the way of that and how are you going to stand in the way of that? Because people are going to build it anyway. Like there's oh, always going to be someone building the next AI thing. So if you try and slow it down, are you actually helping? Or Yes, I absolutely mm. do think you are helping. I think the only way is to have a, a board of critics who are creating a tension of, between people who are not thinking about the potential, I mean, not even long-term, short-term ramifications of certain decisions. I don't know. I just think it's pretty crazy. Mm, I just wonder how it's not the same as... Well, you're removing the tools. So like if you, like the, the horse to the car thing, it's you still need a thing to get somewhere. It's like saying um, I've created, um, like you can now teleport, right? And so now we don't, we don't need a tool. We've just gotten rid of the tool completely. And so you've solved the transportation problem. Yeah, and there's well, that's a lot of freaking jobs. Yeah, and so what's the problem? Like you can get places faster. Yeah. So you've massively improved people's quality of life. They don't have to commute anymore. What are all they those can teleport to work? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So like I, I think like that's it. a very restrictive way of looking at it, saying like, oh, we've solved transport, but when, let's not put it in place. You know, that's a that's a bad idea. I just don't think it's yeah. I just think there's a lot of pros and cons. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just bringing up a lot of the cons. I'm not saying, yeah, I guess I'm just not saying that everything is just airy fairy. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, just don't be negative, you know? <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, and it's, and it's all very valid concerns. Like I can see why um, it would be a massive concern because it's like, it's not just some jobs. It's like, Every every white collar worker's job, 
for example, is gone for now. And then once it's implemented into the right robotic and, um, you know, stuff like that, every blue collar job is now gone as well. So mm, it's, um, it's very interesting. I'd like to hear people's thoughts in the comments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> Who do you agree good... with? My, my pessimistic view or Isaac's very progressive view? I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think it's particularly the right view to say let's all give up all the jobs and everything because I haven't come up with a solution, for example. Um, the So, yeah, I agree that it's right to be, to take it with a grain of salt when it comes out with this um, this new technology stuff, but also everything that we've done so far has kind of led us to a point that's still working. So, you know. You're right. It's, totally we're still agree. doing okay as a Correct. society. So, I don't know. Okay, um, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, so you basically my conclusion is that you still need Python and an IDE to run this properly um, at the moment and you still need to import the GitHub repository. Um, there's plenty of how-tos out there, um, but uh, you need a subscription to OpenAI's ChatGPT4. So personally, what I want to do is try out this um, hustle challenge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a go with the auto GPT. But yeah, I think we'll throw it to a future episode and uh, oh, yeah. we'll see, okay. how we, see how we go. So what, I'll try are you going to give yourself up. a timeline? What number? I feel like you can't really make a good goal unless you've really put a time on it. What episode? I don't know how long it's going to um, approve. But we'll, we'll check back in episode 35. Oh, uh, all right. 35. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll we'll try and make the next five in five and weeks. And if you're not um, here by episode 35, it means it's been really successful. Yeah, obviously. And you're doing yeah. something else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no longer podcasting. Just fishing. <laughs> you found a much better <laughs> podcast host yeah. who you just yeah. pay, who's actually just AI generated. Yeah, absolutely. Are you struggling to get your name out there? Do you want to attract more customers? Maybe just increase your revenue? Well, look no further than Unique. They're an all-in-one marketing agency and they'll help take your business to the next level. They believe in marketing that should be both effective and enjoyable, and I tend to agree. So they offer a range of services such as web design, branding, social media management, and lead generation. The team of experts, they'll work with you to develop a tailored marketing strategy that fits the unique needs of your business. And they don't just stop at making you look good, but they're specialized in setting up lead generating machines. Their top secret methods will help you capture and convert your leads, leading to increased sales and revenue for your unique business. So search N-E-W-N-I-Q-U-E on Google to learn more and schedule a free, yes, free marketing consultation via their website. So let Unique take your business to the next level. Index is a tech-focused recruitment platform passionate about scaling your engineering team, maintaining 95% placement success. To date, they've vetted over 8,000 developers, boasting on average more than seven years' experience across their recruits. Index supplies talent to industry-leading clients such as Omeo, a German unicorn that's raised almost 500 million USD, Perforce, a US-based leading DevOps solutions provider with over 300 million USD in annual revenue, and many others, some of which are backed by firms such as Goldman Sachs and Y Combinator. So if you're struggling to find the right talent, concerned about high employee costs and staff turnover, Index has the solution for you. Through comprehensive assessments, in-depth interviews, and a robust vetting process, Index can provide your business with the very best international tech talent in less than seven business days. For contracts greater than six months, Index is offering a 10% discount to HQLA fans the next time you hire using their platform. 